What's good, YouTube? Man, we back with another reaction video. We about to react to, um, well, this for my hockey subs, man. This for my, um, my, uh, my Avalanche and Detroit Red Wings. My, you know what I'm saying? My NHL fans that's out there. That's, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? In the little short documentaries and stuff like that. But we about to watch how it says, uh, how one violent hit snowball into years of championship gray hockey beef. Red Wings versus Avalanche. I heard about this beef. Um, a lot. Um, I watched Brawl Hockey Town. Um, Brawl in Hockey Town. I'm definitely gonna react to that. Uh, to that fight. Um, I'm just trying to find out which link I'm gonna react to. Um, I should. I'm, I'm probably gonna do that this week. I'm gonna do the Brawl Hockey Town this week. Um, I actually did it before, but they ended up taking it down and gave, gave me a copyright for that. Um, but I'm gonna end up edit. I'm gonna take some parts out and edit it and stuff like that, so I don't get copyrighted. But uh. Yeah, man. Uh, NHL fans, tap in. I'm about to um, get into my player reactions. I was gonna do a couple player reactions, but I don't know who to do. Um, I can't choose who I wanted uh, to react to. So uh, drop some player reactions in the comments. Um, but yeah, man, I'm at three. I should be approaching 3.1K soon. Um, so shit, that's that's like 900 away from 4,000. So let's try to get the channel to 4,000 subs. Um, I appreciate everybody. Like this video, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out the description box. Follow my social media accounts. And let's get it. Up three games to two in the 1996 Western Conference Finals. The Avalanche had a 1-0 lead with six minutes left in the first period. They entered the game with the simple goal of knocking the Red Wings out of the playoffs. But with this hit, Claude Lemieux altered the futures of both franchises for the next seven years. Chris Draper crumbled to the ice, Lemieux left the rink with a game misconduct, and a powder keg got its spark. While that one hit ignited the rivalry, the beef had actually been building since before the Avalanche were even the Avalanche. Lemieux had been a thorn in Detroit's side during the finals a year before, when his Devils swept the underperforming Red Wings to win the Stanley Cup. Lemieux won the Conn Smythe Trophy, which, yeah, led, having to to my history and shit which too. led to him being traded to the newest team out west. Mm. The Quebec Nordiques had just moved to Denver and became the Colorado Avalanche after being briefly named the Rocky Mountain Extreme. See, Led by future that. Hall of Famers Joe Sockick and Peter Forsberg, they were cup favorites and began life in Denver with a 3-2 victory over who else but the Detroit Red Wings. It was a mostly respectful affair as both teams celebrated the return of hockey to Colorado. Detroit only lost 12 more times that season on the way to winning the President's Cup trophy, but one of those victories also directly led to the Avalanche's future success. During an 11-1 victory at Montreal, the Wings scored nine times on Patrick Wall. He was finally pulled halfway through the second period, but having been kept in through that onslaught, the damage was done. Upset and with no glass behind the bench, he went straight to Canadians president Ronald Corey to let him know he was done playing for Montreal. <laughs> Four days later, he was traded to Colorado. Following that opening night loss, the Red Wings beat the Avalanche three straight times including a 7-0 romp on March 22nd, which led many to believe that Detroit had Wall's number. But as they say in hockey, the regular season doesn't mean shit. They met the Western Conference Finals, fired up the grills, and had some beef. May 19th, 1996, with the series in Detroit, the Avalanche crashed the Kid Rock-themed party and stole the first two games in front of a shocked crowd. Mm. The ever-eloquent Denver Post columnist Woody Page gave the Wings some bolts and board material when he said, the Red Wings will get about half their normal oxygen at mile high altitude, but they're already having problems breathing because it's difficult when you have your own gloves around your throat. Mm. Detroit brought the physicality to game three. In the first period, Slava Kozlov guided Adam Foote's face into the glass. Mm. The officials had no issue with this, so the Avs took justice into their own hands. Claude Lemieux found Kozlov and Sid mm. from behind. Each boy received a minor and the Wings took the game six to four. Afterwards, as Claude and his family left the arena, Detroit's coach, Scotty Bowman, yelled at Lemieux from the Red Wings team bus. Claude stepped aboard, traded barbs, and walked away pissed off. The next morning wouldn't be better for Lemieux when it was announced the punch got him suspended for Game 4. This didn't sit well with Colorado, who believed Bowman sent tape to the league office asking for Lemieux to be suspended. Bowman denied it, the team split Games 4 and 5, then returned to Denver for Game 6 and the hit. Draper suffered broken bones to his jaw, nose, cheekbone, right eye That's socket, tough. and had five teeth bent backwards. Other than Steve Eiserman, none of the Detroit players saw the damage until after the game, mm. a 4-1 avalanche victory that knocked the Red Wings out of the playoffs. Once they did, 
Many regretted showing Lemieux any sort of respect after the game. I can't believe I shook this guy's friggin' hand after the game. That pisses me right off. As for Lemieux, he was suspended and fined for the hit, but it wasn't enough for Detroit. Draper was left wondering if he'd have to take things into his own hands. It didn't help that the Avs went on to sweep the Florida Panthers in the finals, and it really didn't help that Lemieux never apologized. The Wings vowed revenge, spent the summer stewing over the hit, and made moves to make sure they could play the bully. In the second game of the 96-97 season, Lemieux tore a muscle that sidelined him for the first two Detroit matchups. They could have used him for the second time around. Martin Lapointe sent mm. Avs defenseman Alexei Gusarov flying into the glass, briefly knocking him unconscious. This, plus a head injury to Rennie Corbet, led Avs GM Pierre Lacroix to confront Lapointe after the game where he was heard screaming, you're never going to win a f***ing game again. Which, as far as insults go, it's just, it's just a bold statement. When Lemieux finally returned against Detroit, he and Draper shared some words but kept their gloves on. The Avalanche skated away with the victory, while the Red Wings had to wait 10 days for the final regular real, season bro. rematch. With police protection as the result of death threats sent his way, on March 26, 1997, Lemieux returned to Detroit for the first time since Game 6. Near the end of the first period, the brawl began. Everything looked par for course until McCarty spotted Lemieux standing alone. Mm. He came up along Claude's side and caught Lemieux with a right. From there, everything erupted in a way that looked rehearsed by Detroit. I felt him, though. It became a scene with everyone playing why. their part. But afterwards, McCarty said no one talked about it before the game. It just happened. Including McCarty kneeing Lemieux in the head. As the refs focused on getting McCarty off of Lemieux, the goalies went at it in an exhaustingly impressive display of balance. The officials finally freed Lemieux, who made his way to the locker room as the crowd erupted. They are on their feet here at Joe Louis Arena. As for McCarty, he received a double minor for roughing. No fighting major, no game misconduct. Just kept on trucking. It took 10 minutes for the refs to restore order, but this game was already out of their control. Dead Martian Konstantinov dropped gloves. Shanahan and Foote went at it to start the second. Followed a few minutes later by Keane and Holmstrom, Ward and Severn, and four minutes later, mm. Dead Marsh looked to get some revenge on McCarty. Dead Marsh trying to get the Red Wings was on bullshit. <laughs> Once everyone remembered him. there was a game going on, regulation ended with the teams tied at five. Somehow, Darren McCarty was still in the game, so naturally, he scored the game winner in overtime. After. And them boys was on straight trash, man. Like, I always heard about this beef, but I never knew, like, the ins and outs and, like, the, like what really happened, man. This is a great, this is a good-ass video. Great breakdown, man. Game. Scotty Bowman said none of this needed to happen. Get all of the way, you know, if you would have said, he's sorry. Less than two months later, Colorado and Detroit had a Western Conference Finals rematch. In a tough back and forth series, the rivalry took over in game four. During a 6 0 Red Wings victory, the third period had 204 minutes of penalties, 64 of which came in one altercation with just over two to play. Watching his team get beat in every way, Avs coach Mark Crawford had had enough and let Scotty Bowman hear it. Standing over the small partition between the two benches, he lay into the legend. Unfortunately, the broadcast didn't pick it up, but Adrian Dater was able to transcribe the tirade in his book, Blood Feud. It pretty much just amounts to Mark Crawford yelling at Bowman, calling him old over and over again, and then telling somebody that he's gonna f***ing kill them. You know, the usual. Crawford was fined, the Wings won the series in six, and then swept the Flyers in the finals. With the rivalry tied at one Stanley Cup apiece, Colorado came into the 97-98 season looking to get back on top. Lemieux knew he needed to squash his beef with McCarty before it led to more of the same. In their first rematch of the season, the pair dropped gloves right after the opening faceoff. While McCarty applauded Lemieux's attempt to end things on the ice, it wouldn't be enough. McCarty said after the game, I respect Claude for doing that as a hockey player but I still have no respect for him as a human being. He still hasn't apologized to Drapes for what he did. He added that he'd be fine if the blood feud never ended. On April 1st, the teams picked it right back up in a game that once again had 200 plus birthday. penalty minutes in the third period alone. That's where we got this beauty. Looking to gain control of the rivalry ahead of the playoffs, Wall fought his second Detroit goaltender in as many years. Mm, and despite losing hands. the game, he skated away celebrating. But in an interview with Osgood following retirement, he revealed that this fight was a different sort of turning point. 
after our fight, this is where I realized it was overboard. This is not what we were there to do. We simply lost our focus, to be honest with you. For the first time in three years, the teams didn't meet in the playoffs. Colorado was bounced in the opening round, and Detroit's road to back-to-back -back cups was made just a bit easier, ending with a sweep of the Washington Capitals. The rivalry was far from over, but over the next four years, the focus was on winning games instead of winning fights. In 2000, they even played the first regular season game in 20 years that didn't have a single penalty. The Avalanche knocked the Red Wings out of the playoffs in 99 and 2000, then won their second Stanley Cup in 2001. The Red Wings bounced the Avalanche a year later in a seven-game Western Conference Finals before winning the Cup back. Those last years gave us Iserman's Statue of Liberty goal on wall, Ray Bork getting his first Cup in his final season, even a brawl that almost led to a third goalie fight had Hashik not tripped trying to get to wall. The hatred turned into a shared respect between the teams, fan bases, and media. It helped that the Avs shipped Claude Lemieux back to the Devils in 1999, since he still never apologized for the Draper hit. They met and talked for the first time before the 2016 Avalanche Red Wings alumni game, and the past was left alone. Even the pair that combined to spark it all had moved on to just appreciate it for what it was. Two teams made up of some of the most talented hockey players in the world, pushing each other to be better. The beef was special and the hatred was real, making it one of the most unforgettable hockey rivalries of all time. Thanks for watching Beef History. I couldn't have made this video without Adrian Dater's book, Blood Feud. It's incredible. It chronicles the entire rivalry. There's so much in there that I couldn't even fit into this video. So go check it out. It's worth a read. Subscribe to SB Nation and comment down below. Yeah, that was video, man. That was a great video, man. I was I just learned a lot of stuff that I that I if well, I just learned a lot of information that I didn't know about. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot that built up to that. It was just a lot, bro. Uh, I'm definitely gonna react to Brawl and Hockey Town. So uh, on my NHL heads, make sure y'all tap in, make sure y'all subscribe, like the video up, comment, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all. Um, I ain't gonna talk y'all ears off. Um, Follow my uh, all my social media accounts. Check out the description box. Subscribe, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay safe, stay tuned, and we out.